Today, we're going old school. Cataclysm was released over a decade ago, but some of the materials from those zones are still worth farming today. Why? Because of this awesome mount that turns you into a dragon, so that your friends can jump on your back and go for a ride. This mount is called the Vial of the Sands, and it's made with alchemy. It requires two types of flasks, true gold, and some potions. Today, I'm going to show you how to farm the herbs, fish, ore, and volatiles used to make this, because they still sell for a pretty penny today. And if they don't sell, you can make a Vial of the Sands yourself. Don't forget to subscribe! Do you like gold as much as I do? Welcome back to episode 2 of Farming Azeroth, the series where I share my best gold farms with you. We're starting with Herbalism. We'll get some Ashara's Veil and Vashtia, along with some Volatile Life. Then we'll get Whiptail from Oldham, along with some Cinderbloom and some more Volatiles. We'll get some Volatile Air by slaughtering Elementals in the Vortex Pinnacle. We'll go fishing for Albino Cavefish in Deep Home. Then we'll get some Volatile Fire by killing Elementals in Mount Hydral some volatile water by killing elementals in the twilight highlands and while we kill the elementals we'll also get the pyrite that we need Vastgea is my favorite zone for farming it's actually three separate sub zones so let's poorly photoshop in each zone our route's going to go through all three of these zones if you've already quested through Vastgea you'll spawn at the end and you can run the route backwards make sure you have cataclysm herbalism this is really important otherwise you won't loot any Volatiles. You can pick it up in Stormwind's Mage Quarter, or if you're Horde, from Ogrimmar on the second level of the Drag. Also, make sure you buy some Darkmoon Firewater. It's pretty pricey, but it increases your gather speed and it more than pays for itself. The portals to each of the Cataclysm Zones can be accessed from Stormwind and Ogrimmar. If you've never been to Vashir, you'll have to do a quick quest to unlock it. It starts here, talk to this guy, or this guy if you're Horde, and you'll be teleported straight to Vastia. You've got to collect one conch shell and three starfish. And once that quest is turned in, you'll permanently get the sea legs buff. Now this is amazing. Just look at how quick it makes your aquatic form. This footage isn't sped up at all, it's just insanely fast. Time to farm Ashara's Vale. This route got me 10,000 gold in 10 minutes. That's even better than the last video I posted. Kelptar Forest can be a bit of a pain because there's a lot of seaweed on the ground which can make it quite hard to spot the herbs. If all the seaweed is making it hard to see, you can turn down the ground clutter in the graphic settings. This part can also be a bit challenging to find the herbs because they can spawn up high above you on these platforms. But now that we're clear of Kelptar Forest, it's smooth sailing. It is very important to make sure you're playing a druid when you're farming in Vashtia, as aquatic form is ridiculously fast in this zone. I mean, it's almost broken how fast this is. As always, I've got some weak auras tracking down in the bottom left corner. You can check here to see how many herbs I've collected, how long it's taken me, and how much gold I'm making per minute. This is based on current auction house prices on my server. With Cataclysm Herbalism, each node will drop some volatile life. So you'll see down here, there is some volatile life that I'm collecting as well. This is a decent boost to the amount of gold you can make when you're herbing in Cataclysm Zones. So the portal to get to Vashtia will actually take you to different places depending on how many quests you've done in the zone. If you haven't done any quests at all, you'll start where I started, up the top of Kelptar Forest. If you've completely finished all quests in Vashtia, then the portal will take you to the Abyssal Depths where I'm going to end this route. So if you've completed the zone, you can just run this route backwards. If you've partially completed the quests in the zone, you'll probably start somewhere in the middle, so you might have to adapt the route to suit. So all up, this run's taken me 9 minutes to go through all of Vashtia. I got 88 Ajara's Veil vale and 48 Volatile Life. That works out to about 10,000 gold on my server. I'm happy with that. Now we're off to Oldham to farm some Whiptail. Whiptail is a herb that spawns along the riverbank, so I run this figure 8 up and down the rivers of the zone. Before we start though, make sure you talk to the Bronze Dragonflight, and make sure you're in the Cataclysm you timeline, something? otherwise there will be high level Farewell. mobs around that can cause us a bit of grief and slow down our farm. We'll start at Rumkahen and we'll leave the town towards the south. Make sure you drink a Darkmoon Firewater before you start herbing, you can buy them on the auction house and they make your gather time super quick. 
Some of the herbs down this end of the river spawn really close to mobs. If you're quick, like I am, you can grab your herb and be on your way. I take these little detours out over the desert to help me get some extra cinder bloom. Cinder bloom can be very valuable on some servers. This seems to be because there's not really a good place to farm it, so definitely grab any that you see while you're doing this route. These whiptail here have already started respawning for me. Whiptail seems to have a fairly quick respawn rate, so if you want you can probably do a shorter lap if you'd prefer. But I like to do this longer loop as it gets me some extra cinder bloom, and I almost always need the extra cinder bloom. I do have binding on this character, but I find that it isn't worth my time to stop for ores while I'm doing this route. I might stop if I see a pyrite ore, but short of that I don't bother mining at all. So all up, this route took about 8 minutes, and we got about 4000 gold. Works out to about 500 gold per minute. That's not bad at all. While we're in Oldham, let's pop up to the Vortex Pinnacle. From the southern end of the zone, if you look up towards the sky, you'll see a floating city. And if you fly up there, you'll find that there's a five-man dungeon that is filled to the brim with air elementals. And air elementals drop volatile air. Make sure you drink a potion of treasure finding before you start the run. This will give you a very small chance to loot tiny treasure chests when you kill cataclysm mobs. I'll talk a little bit more later about these potions of treasure finding. Now you can only run one heroic dungeon each day, so I usually run this dungeon once, then run outside, reset the instance, and then run it as many times as I can on normal difficulty. You can only enter I think 10 instances an hour, so after 10 runs you might get locked out and you might need to take a break or do something else for a while. Overall this dungeon is pretty straightforward, kill everything, loot everything, The mobs after the second boss don't drop any volatile air, so don't bother finishing the dungeon, just clear everything up to the second boss. This boss doesn't drop any volatile air, but he has a very small chance to drop a really cool mount. And he drops it on both heroic difficulty and normal difficulty, so I always make sure I kill him. Once the dragon's dead, you can jump off the edge and you'll be teleported back to the entrance of the dungeon. Then you can reset and go again. It only took 3 minutes to do this run. That's pretty quick, and I got a thousand gold from it. Let's change pace and do some fishing. You'll want to make sure you have Cataclysm fishing. If you hoard, head to the Valley of Honor, and you'll find the trainer standing here on this jetty. For Alliance, the fishing trainer is on the canal between the Trade District and the Mage Quarter. Now before you take off, make sure you buy a fishing pole. Then once you're set, let's head off to the Deep Home portal. We're going to be fishing along the eastern edge of Deep Home, between Silver Marsh and the Crimson Expanse. While you're in Deep Home, keep your eye out for any cinder bloom. Cinder bloom can actually be really hard to gather if you're looking for it, so if you happen to see any, I'd highly recommend grabbing it while you get the chance. Now keep your eyes open for any albino cavefish schools, and let's get fishing! This character hasn't actually leveled up fishing yet, so I'm not going to get as many fish as I normally would. There's my achievement for catching my first fish. I'm going to speed up this video a bunch because ain't nobody want to watch someone else fishing. I love the look of the water in this zone. It's just so flat and smooth and perfect. It's very satisfying. There is one thing you're going to need to watch out for up here, and it's these red clouds of mist. Don't let them touch you. They'll give you a 30 second debuff that stops you from fishing and that can be very irritating. If you have something like water walking, that would be very useful here. I find that the Cataclysm materials do actually sell pretty well in the auction house, but you do usually have to be patient. If you want items that sell quickly, stick to the current expansion. In the last episode in this series, I showed you how to get some Phaedra Moore and Vigil's Torch. So if you want something that sells quickly, probably go check those videos out. People on my server really don't like fishing, so these Albino cave fish go for a lot more than they probably should. Woohoo, there's my achievement for 25 fish. So all up I spent about 11 minutes fishing, I got 29 fish and 1 volatile water, and that works out to 400 gold per minute. 
Now since we've got our fishing pole out, if you ever find yourself in the Twilight Highlands, there's a lake of lava that you can actually fish in. If you keep an eye out for the rings of fire, you can cast a line into them and get some volatile fire out of it. There's usually about four nodes up whenever I pass by. It takes about three minutes to zip around and fish out each of the nodes, and it results in about 300 gold per minute. Let me tell you, that's better than doing world quests, and probably more fun as well. So if you ever find yourself in the Twilight Highlands, maybe if you're on your way to the Bastion of Twilight Raid to get some transmog items, swing by here, make yourself a thousand gold. Now you can also do this fishing in Mount Hyjal. Just outside the entrance to Firelands here, you'll be able to find another four rings of fire that you can fish in. When I filmed this video, there were actually only two nodes available, but as soon as I fished them both out, another two spawned immediately. So I'm not sure if that's what happens all the time. Anyway, it again took me three minutes to clear out all the nodes, and I must say I would rather do this than the daily callings or the emissaries or whatever those chests are called these days. And you make way more gold a minute. So if you ever find yourself in Firelands hunting transmog, step outside and do some fishing. Now if fishing isn't your thing, that's okay. Let's head up to the northwestern part of Mount Hyjal, and I'll show you some fire elementals that we can slay for volatile fire. Now, Mount Hydral can be a little bit annoying because the zone phases in and out when you complete the main quest line. So if this part of the zone has Naga here, like you see now, it means you can't do this farm. You need to do some more quests to get the zone to phase correctly. So I'm going to log out and log back in onto my main character to do this. It should look like this, with some nice green regrowth and little fire elementals trying to burn it all down make sure you drink a potion of treasure finding. This will give you a chance to loot tiny treasure chests which can contain extra volatiles and pyrite ore. The potions are made with alchemy or can be purchased on the auction house. Now you're gonna wanna run up and down the length of this lake killing all the elementals you see. When you get to the end, they'll respawn behind you and you can run back down killing them all over again. Cinderbloom will often spawn along this route. Definitely stop and pick any cinderbloom that you see. With these old world spawns, there's usually not a huge demand for it, so you probably don't want to spend hours and hours and hours farming obscene amounts of stuff. I find it's most effective if you just spend 10 to 15 minutes popping around from farm to farm to farm, get a few things, see what sells on your server, and the things that sell, go and do those farms. But definitely don't go and flood the market with the things that aren't in demand, because otherwise you'll just crash the market and you won't make as much gold as you could. If you bring some friends with you here, you can actually set up a hyper farm. So the idea is when you kill enough of the mobs, they will all respawn instantly. So you can have a party of people that are all just non-stop killing things. The things will non-stop spawn and then every few minutes you can run around and loot and get a whole bunch of stuff. So this run took me about nine minutes and I finished the run with eight tiny treasure chests. Those treasure chests came from the potion that I drank. Opening them up gave me a bunch of extra volatiles and some pyrite ore. Not bad. This route worked out to about 300 gold a minute for me, so that's not bad. The last farm for this video is Volatile Water. So let's head to the Twilight Highlands and head to this river delta. There's heaps of water elementals here, and when you kill them all, they instantly respawn. So let's get murdering. Make sure you drink a potion of treasure finding. It'll again help us get some tiny treasure chests, which will help us get some pyrite ore. Pyrite can be a pain to farm. I find it's easiest to rely on these tiny treasure chests to randomly give you small amounts of pyrite while you're farming other things. Now it takes about 3 minutes for the loot to despawn, so I find it's most efficient if you spend 2 minutes killing mobs and just ignore the loot, and then spend 1 minute racing around and looting everything all at once. Just like the last farm, if you have some friends you can bring them here, and together you can gather these resources a lot more effectively get everyone to spread out and just kill stuff for two minutes straight, then spend one minute flying around looting everyone's kills. You can easily double, triple or even quadruple the yield that you get when you're here with some buddies. You might also be interested in the last video I posted in this series, where I showed you an insanely good spot to go and get Phaedramore and Vigil's Torch. Surely Blizzard's going to patch this out one day, but for now it's still working. So thanks so much for watching my video today, I really appreciate it and I hope you learned something new. If there's something in particular that you'd like to see in the video, let me know in a comment and I'll see if I can make it happen.
I do find that this farm is not a very good one to try and solo. The mobs are just a bit too spread out. It's much better to bring some friends to this one. All up, after 9 minutes, this farm got me about 2,000 gold. That's probably the worst run we've done today. We got 5 tiny chests by the end of this run. And all I got out of them were a few volatile fire, so not so great. But if you farm for the full duration of the potion of treasure finding, you will probably get a better selection of volatiles and pyrite. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.